That allows you to draw a person's eyes to what you're pointing at. That's, that's a feature of pen. It writes in black. It's the legal color for all legal documents. It's acceptable. It's got this handy little clip, so you can clip it onto your shirt. Or your, make sure you don't lose it. Another feature benefit. Those are feature benefits, guys. And that's the way you've got to think about sales. Okay? Features tell, benefits sell. All right? That is, I don't care what you're in, if you're in marketing or sales or anything where you're presenting ideas, features tell, benefits sell. All right? So keep that in mind. Now, what makes a successful salesperson? And this is not from any textbook. This is kind of off the top of my head. The things I've been thinking for. You have to have knowledge of your product, your features, and your benefits, okay? Knowledge of the market. And that means not just the overall national market or just your competitors, but knowledge of everything else that's going on, which rolls into the awareness of your territory or whatever <coughs> kind of area you work. If you work in a business where you're in a, if, again, some of these things as far as sales, I'm trying to move them on to other areas. If you work in a bank, you need to know all aspects of your bank. So when you present ideas to your supervisors, they fit in with the bank's ideas or concepts, okay? Buying and ownership, that's the hardest thing. You gotta really care about what you're doing. And the reason salespeople are motivated is normally bonus, right? Okay, and trust me, that's a big buy-in. I'll be blunt with you guys, and my, if I'm at 100% to plan my bonus over the course of a year is right at $30,000, okay? Then there's an accelerator for every percent I'm above that. Right now I'm at 139% to plan. I'm very bummed. I have a lot of ownership and a lot of buy-in right now in my job, okay? Empathy and understand the customer and their needs. <laughs> This goes back to the features tell, benefits sell. If you don't understand what the customer needs, you can't sell. And many times the customer doesn't know what their needs are. Um, how many of you have purchased a car or been with your family when you purchased a car? Okay. You go in, your dad or mom are used to, you know, oh my God, look at the Corvette. <laughs> Love that, it's great, exactly what I want. However, you've got six kids, not gonna work, right? As a salesperson, you've got to be able to define what the needs of the customer are, even if they don't know what they are. And that takes a lot of empathy and hearing. Remember, you have two ears, one mouth. As a sales representative, you want to get your customer to talk to you, explain what's going on, and then be able to answer their questions and show how what your product has or, or whatever product you have meets their needs or desires. Does that make sense? Okay. Again, this is really basic sales. You gotta have people skills, listening skills, honesty, tenacity, drive, and self-assessment. If you do not check yourself after every time you call, make a call on a customer and say, you know, did I do a good job? You will never get better. And when you're riding with your boss, if you're a salesperson, and my boss rides with me a couple of times a year, in this case, it's been 11 times, and I had a regional manager and a senior vice president of sales, which was terribly frightening. Um, you need to assess yourself because they're assessing you. And so you need to say, you know, did I have a good opening? Did I grab that person's attention? Did I ask a good question? Did I listen to what they said? And did I present them a feasible alternative using my part? And did I close? Did I ask for the business? You'll be surprised the number of sales press people who do not close. They do not ask for the business. Okay, what makes a successful sale? Again, top of my head, positive tension. Um, have you ever been in where someone, you ask them a question, it's like, ooh, what sort of answer are we gonna get? There's a little bit of tension, I don't know. You're at a party, you ask a young lady her phone number, and you get that split second, like, holy, maybe not. I, <laughs> it's been a while so for me, I've been married for 25 years. But you get that moment, you're like, is she gonna answer or not? And you get a good a good response, that positive tension, you can feel it in the call, where they're, they're, they're like thinking about, well, that's a good question, I don't know whether I should answer it, should, how am I gonna answer? That's positive tension, okay? So you look for positive tension when you're doing sales plan. Um, and understanding the needs and how your part meets those needs, kind of a review. And then there's so many sales processes and techniques. I just listed three. And I will tell you, I have probably, in my 20 years plus of sales, I've probably been through 20 plus sales process programs. If you want to sell something and make a lot of money, come up with a sales process, okay? ABC, you'll hear that one. Um, Glenn Gary and Glenn Ross is a movie. If you are at all interested in sales and marketing, I would suggest you look it up. It's about uh, on sales. <coughs> Always be closed. So is this what you want? Is this, if I if I give it to you for 10% off, would you buy it now? Would you buy it now? Always closed. Okay? I don't like that process. But it works for many people. 
Fin selling, situation, problem, implication of need. So tell me what's going on. Why, are you, why do you need product X, the widget? So your problem is that you don't have enough whatever. What implication is there for not having this need filled? Here's my, how my product fills your need. Okay, does that make sense? You guys are taking notes, I'm gonna slow down here for a second. And I do not have any clue <laughs> what's gonna be asked of you, so. Um, finally, challenge, and this is the one my company's very high on right now. How you sell is more important than what you sell. And there have been a number of studies that show this. The salesperson and the relationship with their customer is much more important in many cases than the actual differences in the product. In most cases, there's not a huge difference in the products. I'm in pharmaceutical sales. I sell insulin. My number one product is a product called Lantus. Lantus has a 24-hour half-life. It's dosed once, once a day. It has a relatively low level of hypoglycemia. My competitor is Levomir. It's a 24-hour basal insulin. It's dosed once, sometimes twice a day. It has a relatively low incidence of hypoglycemia. 95% of the time, doctors dose it once a day. Mine is always dosed once a day. Is that 5%? And there's all, they have basic same coverage, they have the same cost. Why do doctors write one product over the other? In large part, because they like the salesperson. So the salesperson is more important than the incremental product differences in many cases. Look at cars. I mean, if you maybe somebody's a Honda guy. You love Hondas, but you walk in and look at a Toyota. It's got four wheels, right? It's got an engine, you get the same basic gas mileage. They all come with leather, and CD, you know, everything, you name it. You hook your iPod up to them, they all Bluetooth. Outside of styling differences, there's not a huge difference in many cases how you're treated by the salesperson. Does that make sense to y'all? 